If the phase transition involves a gas phase, here you get the Clausius-Clapeyron equation, which was given just sort of thrown out there in introductory chemistry. For instance, calculate the vapor pressure at one temperature, given the vapor pressure at another temperature, and the enthalpy change of the phase transition. Well, we're not going to derive this equation, which was just sort of thrown out there in introductory chemistry, the Clausius-Clapeyron equation. So let's start with the Clapeyron equation, and we'll make it the Clausius-Clapeyron equation. So dp dt, this is the Clapeyron equation, is how the entropy, partial molar entropy, changes during the phase transition divided by the partial molar volume, how that changes. And let's, again, take some generic thing in the liquid, and now we're going to make it into the gas. So it's important to write something like this so that we know what these deltas refer to. Now this delta refers to the gas minus the liquid. All right, so let's look at the delta partial molar volume. This will be what we end up with, gas, partial molar volume of the gas in that phase, minus the partial molar volume in the liquid phase. I claim that this is about equal to the partial molar volume in the gas phase. Why? Liquid per mole has a smaller volume. So the partial molar volume, the volume occupied by one mole of the liquid is much less than the gas, so we can approximate the molar volume change as just the par partial molar volume of the gas itself. And now let's use an ideal gas equation. So that's another approximation. Here's our first approximation. Ideal gas means that V over N is equal to RT over P, so the partial molar volume, volume per mole, that's what that is, is RT over P, so this is equal to RT over P when we make the ideal gas approximation. And now we also know that the delta S, the entropy change uh, going from another at equilibrium is just delta H over uh, T, put that there, meaning a partial per mole per mole at the phase equilibrium. All right, so let's substitute that in there, and let's substitute that in there, and what do we get? Well, we got uh, dp dt. Substituting in for delta S, we got delta H over T, and substituting in for a delta V, we have RT over P. Uh, that's not really arranged, but just let's rearrange this. This would just be delta H over R, and this would be 1 over T squared, and this would be pressure. So let's integrate both sides. So this would be, we'll take the P over here, so we can integrate over P, so from some initial pressure to some final pressure of 1 over P dP. That's equal to, we're going to integrate this side, delta H over R, 1 over T squared integrated over T. So this is the natural log of P2 over P1. That's equal to, let's assume, delta H is independent of temperature. So we can pull that out of the integral, delta H over R. And if we integrate this with respect to temperature, we're going from T1 to T2. That's minus, multiply minus, 1 over T, 1 over T2, minus 1 over T1. Or in other words, let's just rewrite this, <laughs> is minus delta H over R, 1 over final temperature, minus 1 over the initial temperature, T1. That is the Clausius-Clapeyron equation. There it is. So now what we do, we use the Clapeyron equation, which we got from a fundamental understanding of phase equilibrium, and we got the introductory chemistry, uh, just doing some substitutions here, making a few approximations. Approximations is that the partial molar volume of the liquid is much smaller than V and also an ideal gas, which assumptions we didn't really mention in introductory chemistry, we get the Clausius-Clapeyron equation. Pretty cool. Well, that's it for this part of the lecture, and then we have one more part of uh, Lecture 10.